students who are trying to uh, getting in the classroom. Uh, very good afternoon, dear students. Uh, this is your speaker, Dr. Hassan, and this is uh, English Poetry. Uh, today we'll explain and carry on our explications about the Holy Sonnet 10, which is Death Be Not Proud. Sonnet 10, uh, which is written by John Donne. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make a, a full uh, a reminder about the overall sections that we've already mentioned last lecture. So uh, we've covered last lecture, John Donne biography, his educational background, his social and cultural education, and his uh, professional career. Uh, the overall trends emerging from John Donne's biography uh, demonstrated the fact he's a highly educated uh, uh, English uh, man, uh, a very gentle man by default, who is being able to obtain uh, a wide knowledge and embrace quite different knowledge and uh, revelations, more especially during his uh, discovery uh, and exploratory uh, traveling around in French, where he walks into the diplomatic uh, relationship with quite different people. Uh, uh, class representative, uh, Mr. Hussain, the, the voice is clear and loud, please. Yes, yes, Dr. All right. Thank you, sir, for your confirmation. Then, uh, last lecture, we've already, we've already went into the poem, where we've already listened to uh, the poem by using YouTube platforms, as well as uh, explaining it line by line. And we've got the Arabic translation. So most of us, dear students, will be able to capture the overall uh, essence and the overall meaning of this uh, holy sonnet which speaks about the notion of death as a very important concept in the human life where the author start, uh, where the author has already started the process of challenging death, considering death as a, a, a person and starts to talk to it in a very honest, general, as well as challenging manner. So this slide has already covered last lecture, where we've read about the notion of as a, 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 a temporary a coward, as well as not the main reason for uh, uh, the end of life. All right. This is the summary where death being Proud was written by John Donne in 1633. I've already uh, made some, uh, 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 some adaptation of the new resources and combine it into the essence of the summary. Uh, the poem is already written in the 1633 uh, by Don uh, John, who is famous as a metaphysical poet. Uh, uh, let's just stop for a while. I think there is some uh, dear students who would like to join with us today. All right. Why then the agreement of death be not a proud summary? We still further to include that uh, that John Donne is one of the poet based poems about death. It tells the listener not to fear death as he keeps morally corrupted company and only leads to heaven. As I've mentioned sometimes earlier, that this poem is challenging death and John Donne, uh, uh, personification of death is the point where he started to uh, challenge and uh, uh, contest the facts of death as an inevitable event in each and every single human. And this poem, however, the speakers, a friend and an enemy, death personified, this enemy is one most fear, but in this sonnet, in this sonnet, the speaker essentially tells him off. So please don't be afraid of death. Let us face to face with death where we are creating a reality to uh, uh, finding out it's not the case to feeling a, a sense of fear with it. The way the speaker talks to death reveals that he is not afraid of death and does not think that death should be sure 
of himself and so proud. So it is not a proud to face death. Death, he's speaking to death directly and he tell it, please don't be proud. What you are doing, you are doing it and I'm ready for it. The confident tune of death, be not proud, and the direct confrontation of death provides an ironic sense of comfort to the readers by implicitly suggesting that death is not to be feared at all, but that in the end, death will be overcome by something even greater. As a focal point of belief into the author convictions, he think it is not death, we are afraid of it, but however, we are afraid of the reason that led to death. So it is not death itself, but there is a stage where the humans will get to experience in order to reach this uh, fatal experience by default. There is always something bigger, more important, more essential, than the actuality of death itself. Existential reality of having the event of death is not the focal point of belief to get fear of it as a result, in fact, but nonetheless, it is the stage that is before death. I've already called it the journey or the journey of end of life. The end of life journey, so to speak, it is more essential, more greater and more bigger. Class representative, please, the voice is clear and high. Could you confirm? Yes, clear. yes, it's clear. All right. We are so further into the analysis. Now I've already, the last slide was providing, or was providing a, a, a overall a, a idea about the, about the theme of uh, death and how it is contested considered, identified, and recognized, and then to be judgmental about itself. Line one to two, death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. This speaker immediately creates a personified version of death by talking directly to him. He paints a picture of death as an arrogant being and one who needs to be humbled. The tools, the equipments are used into this poem is to convey the meaning, don't be afraid of that. This is powerless. So please, if you find him as arrogant, be humble. So it is an attempt to marginalize the effect of death on the psychology of the reader, the listener, and who is already, she is already experiencing the event itself. The speaker assumes the position of the one who must humble this being, death. He tells him that he ought not be so proud, even though for generations people have feared death and call him mighty and dreadful. The speaker, however, with a voice of absolute authority on the matter, simply states, thou art not so. Even each and every single human being consider death as a very, a very quintessential event in every human and in the reality of life. But in reality, we must take death as a default situation. We must uh, experience this uh, situation with a sense of comfort, with a sense of normality, where there is no need for feeling painful or getting panic. This poet uses the literary tactic of uh, apostrophe, to, de uh, to derive home his point, apostrophe occurs when a subject who cannot respond. Readers know immediately that this sonnet will consist of one speaker who will all of, to of the talking and accusing of his subject. There is only one speaker. The speaker is personifying death and talking to him as a person. Excuse me. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, there is somebody who's trying to, to, to join with us, right? Could you, uh, could you accept uh, your message? Mm -hmm. All right. Already, he has already been accepted. 
uh, into our online uh, online uh, uh, classroom from Basra campus. We've got yeah, different yeah, people. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure, uh, class representatives. We've got to help each other in order to create a much durable and convenient online uh, 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 learning and teaching for their students. Thank you, thank yes. you, thank you. It's my pleasure and my duty. Uh, Hussein, you can uh, can you provide me with a gentle reminder before the lecture will end, uh, before five or five minutes, please? So we will open the space on the floor for more discussion, please. Okay, Victor. Okay, okay, no problem. That would be great. Thank you for your cooperation. You are welcome. Lines number three to four. For those whom though think that overthrow, die not poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. In this lions, death be not proud. The speaker accuses the death of having illusions of grandeur. He claims that while death thinks that he has the power to kill, he actually does not. In the word of imagination, in the word of reality, death is uh, a highly, a highly third subject and experience. However, in this lines, there is a clear invitation and a clear contestation that you do need to feel that death because uh, the power to kill, he actually does not. The separation of the soul from the body is not the results of death, but the results, there is something more bigger, more essential and more greater to cause this kind of situation. So don't be afraid of death. It's not related to the end of life, but the experience of the end of life is by itself the case to reaching out the final destination, which is death. The speaker first humbles death by telling him that his idea that he has the power to overthrow lives is simply an illusion. Moreover, to further humiliate death, the speaker calls him poor death. It sounds almost as if the speaker is making fun of death for having lived under the illusion that he had any sort of power over life or death. If you are not, if you are not seeing a situation where he is saying poor death. He is humiliating death, he is considering death nothing but an ordinary case in life which deserves no sense of appreciation nor a sense of uh, fear from, basically. This is bringing up a sense of comfort for those who are afraid of this kind of experience and bringing a sense of stability for those who are feeling a, a, a sense of a trauma during the actual fact of facing death. So it is a sense of consolation for those who are suffering, who are not being able to experience this uh, experience of death with more confidence. So he's attributing the end of life to a sense or to a, a, a factor that is more essential and more uh, quintessential than the actual event of death itself. Then he addresses death in a more personal manner because simply challenging him by saying, yet cannot thou kill me. It seems dangerous for one to threaten death in this way. Of course, it is uh, not quite meaningful to talk to death in a way uh, that is bringing him down. Whereas in reality, it is prevailing, it is dominating each and every uh, last experience of a human being. However, 
knowledge of John Donne background and ideologies can give some insight into the speaker confidence here. As I've mentioned earlier, metaphysical poems are highly, uh, are highly, uh, are highly, are highly educated people. And the, sorry, the metaphysical poems are very sophisticated poem because it is, uh, it has been written by a highly educated and uh, profound people with a sense of humor, with a sense of intellectuality. It brings a combination of what is the, between the intellectual and between the humor in order to challenge life and challenge a highly contested subjects that falls beyond the human senses. All right, class representative, uh, the voice is clear, please. Yes, clear. Yes, clear. All right. Cheers. I appreciate it, man. Though everyone knows that physical death does not occur, the speaker is challenging death in a different way. He uses the Christian theology of eternity to turn its death by telling him essentially, even if you take my physical body, you can never truly kill me. The fact that there is a Christian uh, a situation here where the, uh, the, the, the mention that uh, the, the, the death is not happening to the soul, but rest entirely is happening and causing damage and off to the physical body. As you better know than me, we've got the, the physical, the spiritual, and the mental word. There is the spiritual word, al-alam al-ruhi, the mental word, al-alam Al-fikri, the intellectual, as well as the physical body, al jism al-insan, al fiziai bil hawas. So the, 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 the point of contestation that death is killing the body, but there is something more essential and more important than the body itself, which is the soul. Al-ruh hurra, la ya'tariha fana. Line six. And five. From rest and sleep, which put the pictures by much pleasures, sorry, much pleasure than from the much more must flow. With these lines, dear student, the speaker compares death to rest and sleep, and even uses the word pleasure to describe how one should feel about death. <clears throat> In this situation, Line six, uh, sorry, line five is an invitation to reconceive the concept of death or the effect of death when we hear it or when we see it. So uh, the John Donne, as a metaphysical poet, perceived the notion of death as a fact which will bring reality, comfort, and convenience to life in a sense that just as a restful night of sleep brings pleasure, so should death. So we have, you see, we have a, a situation we, 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 where he's comparing death to a, a night of sleep. When we are at the morning, we, we wake up, we, we strive to achieve our tasks in the morning, but we, when the night comes, we just move directly to our bed, we get some comfort, and when we get some discomfort, we bring a sense of renewal to our mind and our physical uh, 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 fitness and uh, muscles as well. So, so it, it calling the physical death, it doesn't bring any cause of harm. Just live the experience, because for some it is a pleasure, for some it to bring a feeling of comfort as the sleeper who goes to sleep in the night and see different kinds of dreams and different things. And early morning, he will get up with a sense of renewal, enjoyment, and appreciation to the world. The speaker implies that sleep is only a small glimpses of death. Thus, there is nothing to fear in death, for death will bring something like a pleasurable sleep. This point of seeing death as a pleasure and bringing rest and bringing feeling of content, uh, uh, bringing feeling of satisfaction is to reduce this level of fear into the pictures of the people, into the mental map of those who are thinking and reflecting about death. So don't be afraid of death. 
It is part of our reality and uh, we have to be able to uh, acknowledge the fact it is available, it is for everybody, but we must be able to stand firm when it comes. And when this moment comes, we will be able to perceive it, to live it, and to stand firmly to it. Ya man tawahada bil uzzi wal baqa wa qahara ibadihi bil mawti wal fana. Naam. So this is our reality. That who creates uh, death and life in order to test you. So who is from you is better than in doing good deeds. In fact, who is a better facing death? الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم نعم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور so even in this situation even in death must, most people must be able to stand firm in the face of this experience and not be afraid of it I think there is uh, uh, somebody who is trying to join with us into this lecture isn't it? Uh, class representative is there anybody to join with us today? I, I cannot find anybody. Nobody yet. Talab, is the Ali clear? Do you hear it? Ali Okay, uh, let's move directly to the next slide, from slide 8 to slide 9. What's going on in slide 9? Line 7 to 8, and so on it. And, so, uh, and soonest our best mean men with the do go rest of their bones and souls delivery. Here in death, be not proud. The speaker says that the best man seems to experience death with the soonest. There is different kinds of perspective here where some people in ordinary life, people are living their life, enjoying their life. When they are getting elder, when they are becoming sick, then they will die. But there is a, a, a diverging fact into this uh, poem where uh, the, the experience, uh, uh, those who are uh, 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 the best are experiencing death the soonest. So they are, they are being able to experience the end of life uh, before any expectation. Why other have long questioned why it seems as if the best people die soonest? The speakers offer an answer here, suggesting that the best among men deserve to experience the peaceful rest of death sooner. This, the physical death is comfort for those who are, you know, trying to find a much higher, better, and more essential reality than the physical reality. In this sense, those who are being selected, those who are being purified, those who are being, uh, those who are being able to find a better reality and surprise for a more peaceful and purified way, they will, they, are, they will die sooner than those who are not. Without, without having to endure the agonies of a long life on the earth. Life is suffering. Those who are being blessed, according to this sonnet, will be able to face death before it can be imagined or as soon as possible. The, the finding a point of exit from life will reduce our commitments will reduce this feelings of staying directly to life. هذا الحس من تقليل قيمة الحياة يخفف شوية من غلواء الإنسان اللي باقي متمسك بهذا الدنيا ويقول له يا بتر أنت ما تعرف وش وقت الموت ما تك ممكن يكون قريب. Although the facts of declaring that people will die quite early, it brings a, 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 a feelings of pulsion as well as a feeling of, you know, the, uh, disgust. Oh my gosh, I'll, I'll die tomorrow. Oh my gosh, don't tell me to die. I don't want that feeling, man. I want to live my life. I want to see my children. I want to bring a better tomorrow. When can I have fun? When can I travel? When can I be with my parents, my wife, and my children? This is what we used to, in fact. But this author finding a quite different case here. 
He's saying that staying more longer in life is bringing nothing, man, than misery and more suffering. So those who are living life quite early, they will reduce their sense of suffering. All right? The speaker described it as the rest of their bones and soul's delivery. So, the ability to find death as a positive force to bring peace, to bring, to bring a sense of, you know, rest, is creating a spaces of hope for those who are actually afraid of facing the, 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 the inevitability of this experience, in fact. إن عملية خلق صورة ذهنية بأن الموت هو راحة ويقلل العذاب النفسي والعذاب الجسماني إنها محاولة لخلق مساحات من الأمل في قلوب الناس الخائفين للخروج من هذه التجربة بأقل نعم بأقل المشاعر المؤلمة Both of these descriptions make death seem like a welcome friend who comes to graciously offer Rest and peace and the deliverance of one's soul from an earthly body where pain and suffering abide. So he is the releaser, he is the saver, and who is being able to create a more safe spaces for those who are suffering into this temporary world. So he's trying to convey that temporality will remain on the earthly life and the, 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 the experience of death will create a sense of much easier and more essential existence for humans all right so let's now move to slide number 10 uh, class representative uh, 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 we've got sufficient time or not oh no not no there are no uh, time. we've got no time all right uh, how many minutes remain um, from the lecture 40 minutes Four or 40 minutes, please? 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, we're supposed to end our lecture by 3.30, right? And four Zainab? Okay. Ah, four o'clock, we will get yes. done. Yes. Okay. Four, four o'clock, we will get done. The end of the lecture. Uh, thank you for the clarification. And this is all very well. So we just go back to the lecture. Okay, I think I've already covered number nine slide. Right? Uh, I've, uh, I, would, uh, I think we've reached number 10, right, guys? Yes, yes, yes. right. Okay, number nine, sorry, number 10. This slide illustrates lines number nine and 10 explication. Though art slave to fate, chance kings and disparate men, unders, and dust with the poison, warp, and sickness devil. Here, the speaker talks on a stronger tune and begins to taunt death with more forcete than he did at first. Here, he calls death as a slave to chance kings and the separate men. In order to explain more about this case, the author tries to minimize the status of death by considering him and recognizing him as a slave. The poet John Donne is being able to identify chance to separate man as a significant factors into the process of reaching to death. So chance is the concept for John Donne to bring us as human beings to the end of life. Chance is more important than the actuality of death uh, because chance, it can be happened. As I have mentioned sometimes earlier in the last lecture where we have, a, a, we have a different, different timetables and different schedules for birth and end of life, chance 
is having the the imminent power to reduce the amount of our life. Let's say I'll, I'm living I'm living now in 2021, and I supposed to die in in 2050. But because of chance, or because of an accident, or because of something else beyond my sense of control, I'm gonna go out of this life. So chance creating a more essential sense of vulnerability to death than the actuality of death itself. إن الفرصة للتعرض إن الفرصة اللي 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 إن فرصة حدوث الموت تزيد من هشاشة موتنا أكثر من حادث الموت نفسه. This is the this is the the, the aesthetics of thinking about the metaphysical poetry where we are thinking beyond our sense and control where almost always points of high contestation such as chance such as time such as place as well as death and god are highly challenged contested and reorganized in a more uh, uh, connected factors to uh, different elements and to be presented in a very humor and which way he tells death that he's not mighty and dreadful, but rather a poor slave who can't even act on his own, but is driven not only by fate and chance, but also by people, rich and poor alike. So there are certain factors which increase the, uh, the, 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 the importance of uh, other fa the importance of uh, 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 death, not death as event, but which bring us the journey, the end of life journey is more important than death itself because poor and rich people can be a source of death. This chance can be a source of death as well. King, authorities, accidents, explosions, unexpected scenarios are more important than death based on John Donne's perspective in this poem. He then accuses death of having lowly companions, such as poison, war, and sickness. Those lowly companions, like poison, war, and sickness, are more into the fact of contributing to the end of life journey and ending up in a situation where we are facing the inevitability of death. He has tended telling him that he is not the uh, he is not to be feared, but rather that he is a slave to the will of fate and man. لا يجب علينا أن نخاف من الموت لأنه عبدا إلى إرادة الإنسان وإرادة القدر. Simultaneously, and that as a lowly slave, his companions are the even lower, lower layer beings, such as sickness and war. Negative feelings, dangerous events, and moments of high sufferings are also sources for death, which we considered are more important than death itself. These accusations serve to allow the readers to feel a sense of power and victory over death. When you are trying to dehumanize, when we are creating a sense of more balanced yourself by reducing the effects and the impact of the other situation, such as death in this context, you will be more confident and your self-esteem will bring in into a more higher level. The voice is clear and high. Class representative, please. Yes, yes. yes it's clear. All right. The speaker certainly feels authority over death. Knowledge is power. Power is knowledge. So when we have knowledge, we have the mention that there is something more essential, more greater than death, we will be able to face it. So knowledge is bringing a sense of power to, uh, uh, to reduce the effects of death and bring it to uh, a, a subservient position into the formula of end of life. This accusation 
save to allow the readers to feel a sense of power and victory over death. The speaker certainly feels authority over death, and he passes this feeling along to the readers who have, he puts death in his place by talking, by talking down. صغر المخلوق في عينك يكبر الله في عينك. So sometimes we need to uh, try to resystematize our convictions in order to reduce of frustrations and elements which create a ghost in our life. This sense of reduction will bring us into a more confident level when we can face these fatal matters in a more courageous way. Line 11, line 12. And Pope or, or charms can make us sleep as well. And better than they struck, why swells, swell us though then? The speaker continues to taunt death even more, saying that all, the, all he brings is a little sleep and he doesn't even do that as well as some other bringer, bringers of rest such as Pope or charms. There is a direct message to death. There is, a tire, there is a direct conversation by an adult man talking to death in a very honest, a very candid, and a very clear manner. That it is just it's nothing, just like a little asleep. So to, to make things more plausible here, he's also considering it, it's bringing a sense of puppy on charms, bringing a sense of feeling better, feeling graceful, feeling contentment, and feeling convenient. This comparison further portrays death as something not only weak, but even pleasurable. So, according to this poem, death is not bringing harm, is not bringing fear, but it's bringing a sense of pleasure, because there is a sense of uh, rest and there is a sense of convenience. The speaker question death is asking, why though then? He's asking him why he is so puffed up with pride when he cannot even do his job as well as other can. So if you know the speaker of the poem, challenge death and tell him if you cannot, Soul from the body, why you are feeling proud of yourself? It is a highly problematical situation. The paradox here is that when you are not doing your function, why you want to get this high appreciation and this sense of respect? عندما لا يحقق الأهداف والمقاصد لماذا يجب علينا أن نحترم أيها الموت لماذا نحترمك إذا أنت لا تستطيع أن تأخذ الروح وتفصلها عن الجسد So why you are, why you are, why you are proud about yourself the, the function of death the nature of death is being contested here So this thoughts of contestation nonetheless is the focal point of belief for the author which bringing up more events and reducing the sense of death to a more lower sense. Line 13 and line 14, I think this is the last slide. One short sleep passed, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death though shall die. حتى الموت يموت يا شباب. يوم ينفخ في الصور يوم ينفخ في الصور خلاص even death People will go out, will wake up from the graves, and the cemetery will be empty. With these final lines of death, be not proud. The speakers reveal exactly why he has been taunting death so relentlessly. Although it is obvious that death is real and that people who experience death, who, who experience death do not come back to earth. The speaker reveals his reasons, his reasons for, for claiming that death is weak and easily overcome. He claims that death 
is only one short stream and that those who experience death wake eternally. There is a direct acknowledgement to the fact of life after death because who are experiencing death, post-death experience, experience is awake eternally. Then he claims that death shall be no more. So, death though shall die, even death will die, and death is not the reason for our suffering, is not the reason of our temptation, but we must be able to put in consideration other factors such as chance, fate, kings, authority, men, and uh, nature, which are more essential factors that create a strong sense of vulnerability to death. Finally, he tells death, thou shalt die. The speaker has not only told death that he has no real power over, uh, over everyone, but that he will experience the end of himself when all wake in eternity and death will be no more. I think this is the points where we've reached the ability to cover the overall essence of this poem, where we've started with the notion of death, the personification of death, as well as the ability to address death into a very challenging way, this ability and this uh, uh, candid reality and the creation of uh, scenarios with death is nothing but the fact of uh, facing this uh, uh, overwhelming experience with, with knowledge, with power, and with a high confidence. So please, any, anyone who would like to ask a question about the mechanism of death and how is death contested and what is the meaning and essence of death in, the, in this poem, it would be my distinctive pleasure to answer back immediately. Anyone? Peace to Aliyah Shabab. All right, I think there's no question now. Uh, uh, let, me, let me try to uh, just stop the recording. And uh, the lecture has already been covered. So thank you.